Before we talk about the fiber reactive dyes, what I'd like to do first is have a conversation about the cloth. Because let's face it, ultimately this is all about the cloth. You are dyeing yardage to sell, you're dyeing yardage to, to make a quilt, you are printing or using surface design techniques on yardage to make garments, curtains, backings for embroidery, art cloth, who knows? Ultimately, why we're all here is taking the white piece of cloth and putting color on it. So it's important we talk about the cloth first. Fiber reactive dyes are only suitable for use on natural fibers. And within that band, we have two primary categories. We have the cellulose fibers and we have the protein fibers. Now it's important to say with the protein fibers, we have a choice here between silk and wool and the fiber reactive dyes are really only suitable for silk. If you want to dye wool, you'll need to start exploring acid dyes. So cellulose, protein, but of the protein, only the silk. So let's start by looking at some of our options here. I haven't got an example of every single type of cloth known to man, but I've got a fair few here. Right at this end of the spectrum, we have an old French grain sack. Um, heavy, 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 but hemp is a natural fiber. Moving on, we've got a piece of seven and a half ounce cotton canvas, uh, which as you can see, dyes up beautifully. Next, we have linen. Again, fairly substantial weight, but you can see here that in terms of surface design processes, no problem at all. Muslin. This is a medium weight and I find with mu muslin that it, it takes a little bit of work to get it really rich but particularly if you're bucket dyeing, if you work at it, muslin will often take on a sort of almost suede like look and that can be very very attractive for things like functional quilts because it looks very inviting to cuddle up to. Here we have some cotton in this instance, a cotton sateen. So the weave of that means on one side it has a very soft uh, sheen to it, which again, many people find attractive. Uh, this has been screen printed, and this is a, a perfect kind of weight potentially for use with cork making. Next, in the cellulose range, we have bamboo. And if I pick this up, you can see that this particular fabric is has got a lot of drape. Um, so this is something not really suitable for quilt making, uh, a little bit on the light side, but lovely, lovely, lovely for garment making or if you wanted curtains that kind of wafted. So bamboo fiber, great. Now, before we move on to protein, you can buy lots of fibers out there that are a mix of um, either two types of cellulose, so let's say rayon and cotton, or they're a mix of cellulose and protein in the case of this piece of fabric, which is a silk cotton mix. 53% silk and 47% cotton. And uh, that, so what's happening here is we've got some of the stability of the cotton, but also the soft sheen and drape that the silk gives us. So silk cotton can be an option um, for quilt making. It's quite a tight weave, so a little difficult to hand stitch, but also super for garments. Okay, so that's the range of cellulose I've got. We've gone from hemp, linen, heavy canvas, muslin, uh, normal cotton sateen, and of course you can get lighter weights of cotton, such as uh, cotton organdy, bamboo, and uh, a silk mix with cotton. Let's move on to silk. This is a silk broadcloth, Again, a very, very, very nice weight for garment yardage. Um, a medium weight, I would say. Not too heavy, not too light. Next on the spectrum, we have a, a pongé or a habitai. And we can see that this is very, very floaty and, and flowing. So this, this can be beautiful stuff for making scarves, for example. And last but not least, Here's a piece of silk organza. Very, very sheer, very, very floaty, can be lovely for scarves, 
uh, people who work with stitched textiles will often use a panel of silk organza sometimes as a, a key focal area hanging in front of something and it's wafting and moving. So a beautiful fabric for movement. Um, so there we go, natural fibres. The reactive dyes will not take on synthetics. So what I'd like to do next is talk about if you are in a market or perhaps somewhere exotic like India and you spot some fabric that you think is fabulous. With today's technology, sometimes it can be hard to absolutely guarantee that the fabric that you're buying from the market stall or the little guy in India is truly 100% natural. And the only way to do that is to conduct a burn test. So I'd like to go on and do that next.